Disclaimer, this video is only for educational purposes and not an investment or trading advice by any means. Any stock discussed is purely an academic exercise without any recommendation or commercial interest. Scientific investing as well as presenters may or may not have any investing or tra trading positions in the stocks discussed. During this video, we don't hold any responsibility for anyone's investing or trading losses please do your own due diligence or consult your financial advisor. Hello viewers, welcome to Scientific Investing and I hope you had a good uh, week. And uh, last week, uh, though uh, we didn't release a stock analysis video on our channel, uh, we did collaboration with the Logical Investor and uh, we did present one of the stocks and uh, you know it was very happy to see that you know the whole format was really appreciated and uh, you know thank you all for you know the encouraging words uh, we are working on the you know next analysis and the next one is going to come on our channel which is scientific investing and again shubham from logical investor he will be there and it is again a very very interesting company again i will not break the suspense uh, keep watching our space and you know keep following uh, me uh, on twitter to know more about you know what is this next company is going to be so what we are going to do in today's video is a uh, few weeks back uh, we had a session on python uh, which was part of our series called uh, series called quants bytes so as a part of quants bytes in this video i will take that python session ahead and if you remember in that session uh, we told you how to you know get uh, stock market trading data from uh, you know using python packages whether you want to do for indian companies or you want to do for us companies so there are so, five, six things we will learn in today's video. Number one, apart from trade data, what all other data we can get from these Python packages. Number two, uh, uh, what kind of, you know, historic analysis we can do with uh, using Python. Like, can we do, uh, you know, uh, the average monthly analysis, you know, the heat map of last 10, 15, 20 years of stock performance or the index performance. Uh, number three, uh, can we identify what, what were the drawdown periods for a particular stock? Because many times uh, in recency bias, we think that the stock is going to give great return without looking into history. Uh, so these are some of the things which we we'll look at. And sometimes it becomes very difficult to gather all this data where I will show you in 10 to 15 line of codes how you can do all of this and i will also show you how to interpret those charts how to interpret that data and how to generate insight so i'm in the same script script data sources and last time if you remember uh, we had tried to you know download data for infi for apple and we did see the financial data also for apple so let me just quickly repeat that process and again if you have not sure uh, you are starting for the first time i would suggest again go back watch that python video so that you know you can continue the uh, you know you can continue uh, right from the beginning and you should know you know why we are doing all this so you can see that we have downloaded the infosys data and i can show you if i give a head command i'm quickly passing through because we have seen all of this you have the trade data and if you want to get the financial data uh, you know by passing this command you know you can get the financial data so we are good so far and you can see this is the Infosys uh, balance sheet we have. 
So now let us try to go and let us try to do now a little bit of exploratory data analysis. And here I will introduce one more package. Again, we have seen what is a package uh, and why package is used. So this quant stats package, it's a package which will help you to do a lot of quantitative analysis, a lot of data analysis, a lot of statistical analysis. So follow the same process, do a pip install quant stats and import this package quant stats as QS. So I'm going ahead and I'm doing it. And once you get a tick mark here, we are good. So, okay. And now we will start our exploratory data analysis. So if you see, I'm using this quant stats package nickname QS, which we imported. And then we have a command called utils.download returns and I'm passing in Fuse's sticker. So this will download all the data related to how Infosys has performed as a stock in you know last few years since it got listed. And then I am plotting a view of how the Infosys stock has performed and that chart I'm naming as Infi performance. So let's run this command. And now you can see when I run this command, I get this beautiful chart uh, starting right from 1996. And there are three parts to this chart. The first part is cumulative return, which says, what is the return Infosys has generated over a period of time right from 1996 when it got listed? And you can see that, you know, this is the kind of return Infosys has generated and uh, last few years because of the IT boom, you know, this curve has gone like exponentially up. The second chart, and you can see Infosys has been a tremendous wealth generator. The second chart is very, very important because it says about the drawdown. So uh, let me explain what is the concept of a drawdown. So the concept of a drawdown is like, what is the maximum fall a stock has seen from its previous peak? So let us say Infosys gets listed at 100 rupee. And let us say it runs up from 100 rupee and it goes till 200 rupee. And let's say it makes a high of 200 rupee and then the stock starts falling. And let us say from 200 rupee, the stock falls to 40 rupees. So 200 rupee to 40 rupee, if you see, the fall is almost 160 rupee. 160 rupee of 200 rupees, 80%. So when Infi moved from, and this is hypothetical, when Infi moved from 200 rupee to 40 rupee, Infi has gone through a 80% correction because from the peak, it has corrected 80%. So we say that the drawdown of Infi in this period, the max drawdown is 80%. So it's not from the point you started, but the point of previous high from that high, how much the stock has corrected. So what is interesting is if you see in 2000, from 2000 to 2004, Infi went almost 80% down and we all have heard about many of you would have heard about the, you know, the tech bubble of 2000, but many of us, we have not experienced. I think I just got into my engineering that time. And I remember my seniors, you know, they were struggling for placement. I mean, I have very, you know, hazy memories, but this is how it looked like a, a company like Infi. It's not like they were not growing. The business was growing at, you know, 20, 30%, 40%, but still the stock corrected 80%, the single reason valuation. And that is why whenever I tweet, uh, I give a lot of importance to valuation. So that was the kind of drawdown it went. So you can see the whole drawdown of last 2025 20, years, and we will discuss more about it. I will, I will discuss more about it as we come further. And the third chart is daily return. Like what is the daily return in forces has given? And if you see these years, you see the spikes vertical, whether it's a positive return or negative return, you know, the, the band is higher. And as we have, uh, you know, gone further, this band has become more narrower and narrower. So we'll discuss the reason. So this gives you a simple view of, you know, return drawdown, but we can do much more beyond this. Try to place this command qs.report.full. So see here, we are just trying to get a view of the snapshot, which is a, you know, very micro view, but a full report is something which you should try to generate. And when you give this command, a long report will get generated and, you know, hours of effort of searching for data, building chart, analyzing all of that is there with you in a one line of command. And you replace Infosys with any stock in the world, you replace Infosys with any index in the world, you'll get the same format analysis. 
And now let me explain because interpretation is the most important part. So, so much of information now you have to chew and analyze uh, right from your data coverage to your return to your statistical ratios. I will not cover a lot of statistics because uh, this video will not be apt. I will try to cover some other time, but you have the lot of things. So we'll cover one by one. So let's start. So if you see uh, this tells, uh, you know, what is the data coverage? So Infosys uh, data coverage is right from 1996 till, uh, you know, the Friday evening till when the stock got traded, it's all updated. Uh, Risk-free rate, again, it is useful for some of the statistical analysis, uh, time in the market, cumulative return. So this is the kind of return Infosys has generated, which if you convert into almost a 26 year history, Infi has given 36% CAGR return despite of that 80% drawdown. I will skip these ratios. I will cover in some other uh, you know video, but the max drawdown of Infi has been 83%, and we'll we saw where that drawdown happened, and we'll see more. The longest drawdown days has been almost this is like almost five to six years. So no, uh, uh, many times investors they find it very fashionable to say that I want to buy quality companies and I'm okay paying higher price. I'm willing for the correction to happen and I can bear the pain for two years. But imagine somebody who invested in Infi at the peak in 2000, he had to wait for 2,200 days just to recover that money, assuming he didn't put SIP or he didn't put the money. I mean, assume it looks again fashionable to say when the stock falls by 50%, how many of us have guts and balls to do that kind of you know SIP? And six years of drawdown, how many of us have patience to, you know, uh, wait for a drawdown, you know, to get, uh, you know, to, to recover the money for six years. So such a long period. So you have a depth of correction and you have a width of correction. And this could be one of the most brutal correction. That is what uh, overvaluation and stock can do. And this is not because the Infosys was not performing. It was still growing at good 25, 30% plus during those times. So this is what means by your, your, you know, your uh, max drawdown period and all. And uh, uh, this is the kind of return Infosys has given on a daily level, 0.1%. But if you hold for monthly, the mean average monthly return has been 2.6%. And average yearly return has been almost 35%. And that is how you get a 36% CAGR. Again, I will skip some of the statistical metric. Uh, you know, I will come to more important things which are easier, uh, like what has been Infi latest return, last month return, three month return, six month return, one year return and all of that. What has been the best day in life of Infi? One day the stock went 17% up and there was a worse day. So, you know, we all are talking about Facebook falling 25% and you'll see tweet, imagine some Indian companies falling 25%. Okay, this has happened in the fast. It has happened with Infosys. This is the worst day and I will tell you which day was the worst day. So, you know, you will have, you know, those, uh, you know, views also. Uh, and uh, uh, if you see the uh, win days, how many days Infosys share went up versus down? So 52% of the days, the share price went up and 48% of days it went down. So no simple, you know, strategy that you randomly buy. If you randomly buy, you know, 50% binary event. But if you stay in Infosys for a month, your probability of making money increases because 61% of the month Infosys has given a positive return. If you stay from more one than one month to one quarter, your probability increases further, little more up 63%. But if you are invested in Infosys for a year, 70% of the years out of 26 years, you ended up getting you know positive return. So this is what the power of long-term investing means. You increase your horizon and if the stock is doing well, if you have not paid very high, I mean, despite of paying high price at certain point of time, this is the performance. So if you don't pay high, your probability of, you know, making good return will increase. And these are some of the worst drawdown. There are two times when Infosys has corrected more than 50% and almost three times when Infosys has gone for a multi-year correction, almost three year, three year, six year correction. So six, three, nine, three, 12 out of 26 years, 12 years Infosys has not given positive return. It was in red. Uh, if you can use technical, avoid those 12 years out of 26, well and good. And this is the cumulative return, how Infosys gave return. And this is the end of year return, year by year. So you can see Infosys, it was like a 200, 2, 2x bagger, 1x bagger, 8x bagger. So almost 
Infosys did almost a 32x here and then went through almost a six years of drawdown period. But when you'll see these 26 years, there are only one, two, three, four, five, six years, six out of 26 years, Infosys has given a negative return rest. All the years, Infosys has given a positive return. If you see the distribution of monthly return, of course, it is positively skewed because that is how Infosys has given 36% CAGR. And that is how you get that 2% monthly return. And a few more important things, this gives you all the, you know, uh, the drawdown. And what is interesting is, uh, as the time has progressed, the Infosys drawdown duration, as well as the amount, if you see 80% drawdown, 50% drawdown, 40% drawdown, 30%. One reason we can attribute is because uh, Infosys from a, you know, a early age business became more and more matured business. The, biz the earnings became more predictable and hence the market was much better in predicting what is the right valuation on Infosys and hence the drawdown and the volatility has decreased over a period of time. So take this as example for any because a lot of new tech IPOs are coming and you know uh, there is a mode that uh, you know you should invest at whatever valuation. I don't suggest it and be ready to brace the volatility uh, because see what Infosys was in 2000, some of these companies are at that stage. And as they will mature, as market will understand their businesses, as they will become more predictable in terms of their profitability, you will see slowly that volatility may reduce. The another very interesting chart, as I said, I will walk you through how to create a heat map of return. So this is like the heat map of monthly return of Infosys, the green, darker the green, more the return, you know, the more the red, less the return. And you can see it has been pretty good. Some of the bad months in 2001, two months Infosys corrected more than 33%. 2003, again, a 30% correction. 2008 dot-com bubble, uh, sorry, uh, the depression, it was a 20% correction and 10% correction. 2013 was another 22% correction. And after that, Infosys has been more or less a decent kind of you know performer. The other thing, if you see the return quantile at daily versus weekly versus monthly, quarterly. So as you increase your time horizon, you can see your expected return keeps on increasing and your probability to make a decent return also increases. So see, you saw with one or two lines of command, there is so much, you know, you could cover and you could get to learn about Infosys. Uh, I would suggest you take any other stock, like any stock which you are tracking right now, you want to invest. Use this command, go through history, analyze all of this. So if you liked uh, this video, do go and press the like button. Do write in comment what did you feel. Do you want me to make more videos like this so that we can continue this Python series? So are you interested in learning more? If yes, do put your comments, do like and you know, let everybody know. Thank you.